about this sport and we introduce you to it. Good day, my name is Pule Mulebati. You are watching Stories Untold. Welcome to the show. Today we follow the story of Nicola Rousseau, the eighth time South African pool title holder, to mention some of her accolades. Her story began on a rocky path. Let's have a look at it. She's got the eye, the zeal and the stroke. This is Nicola Russell, a multiple championship winner in pole table sport. Having made such a sterling record for herself in Q-Sport, this is how she was introduced to the game. I started noticing that there was guys playing pool and um, every, every Friday actually they were there and they were all around the table and they were doing trick shots and, and, and finishing balls and I didn't know anything about, about, about the game and, and all of that. But um, I, I, I don't know, I, I just started getting a liking in, in, into the game and, and, and before I know it, I, I just came for the game and, 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 and not, not, not coming to play computer games. Well, in the beginning, the guys were like um, wanting to just get me away. They, they were like, you in, you in a way, you in a way, what are you doing here? So um, I, I almost like isolated myself from them, uh, moving to the, to the next table. Um, but I actually copied what they were doing. So um, I, was, I was actually standing, okay, they're standing like that. Oh, are they doing that? They're doing that, you know? Uh, I was actually just imitating everything they do on the table. And then when, when they finish with, it, with, with whatever they did on the table, um, I'll, and they'll leave like the, the leftover balls and I'll just go and, 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 and do what they, they, they did and trying to pot the balls and all that. And I continuously did that. And, 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 and it was almost like, geez, this girl doesn't want to doesn't wanna listen. We don't want her here, you know? And, 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 and they gave me the attention, they started uh, coaching me, I started getting involved with them, play, playing with them. But it was in the midst of that, at the age of 11, that her life took a rough detour. This is Galvindale, a dangerous place in Port Elizabeth. Not only was Nicola born and raised here, but she found herself an active participant in the crime, violence and drug activities that happens in this neighborhood. Galvindale is not one of the easiest areas to, to be raised up as a, as a kid. I'm sure everyone knows that by now. Um, I was introduced uh, to drugs at the age of 11 after being a very, very vibrant um, young girl. Um, I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to be a doctor. What, what actually happened was, in the time that I was coming uh, to the game center after school, um, I, I didn't have a lot of money because my parents was actually, you know, like limiting me and all of that. But uh, th there, was, there was this one guy that, 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 that actually, I don't know what his intention was and I didn't ask him, but uh, he gave me five rand, ten rands, and, and I think that time the, the, the pool table were like 50 cents. Before I knew it, uh, I actually, um, on, on my way to high school, I, I met this very same guy and um, he offered us then, it was weed, so he offered us, he said, you know, don't you want to try um, uh, you know, a couple of puffs of the weed. I was like, no, are you mad? Are you, are you crazy? And he was like, no, man, just have a couple of puffs, you know. Um, don't do anything to you. They were like, no, you know, I, I, I don't want to. And, and he said, you know what? Um, how will you ever know if you're not going to try? You're going to go to house parties. You're going to go to clubs. You're going to, man, man you, you're going to see your friends tripping, laughing, chilling, whatever uh, the drugs are, are doing to them you'll see that it's, it's, it's a great enjoyment. You will always wonder. It is going to, it is going to um, leave a question mark in your head. And I think that was a game changer. Um, I, I, don't, I, I always say that he dished up a plate of food that I couldn't reject. I wasn't even hungry, you know, but I, was, I, was, I, 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 I wanted to try it. And so began the tumble that saw her homeless and thieving. And from the... It was, it was an everyday thing. With the weed, I went to the next level, which was uh, mandrakes. I, I thought weed was great, but this was even better. You know, seventh heaven, they, they, they used to call it. And um, from there, uh, I, I lost the, I, I mean, I used to sing in the choir. I used to um, be in the brigade. I used to, Sunday school, you name it, I was there. I, I, I wanted to be a somebody. But when I opened that door for drugs to come in, my life was, was, was never the same again. I, I lost 
every single thing in no time. I ended up in the streets, uh, but uh, what, what, what was happening is, is that my parents tried everything. They came, they said, you know, we want to help you. And I came out of denial uh, after fighting to say that I'm not doing drugs. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, I, I, I confessed because I saw the danger. And I really wanted to come out. They sent me to Cape Town. They got pastors in to, to pray for me. They, they sent me to Sankar. They, man, they tried everything. They spent a lot of money to help me. But unfortunately, change never happened in my mind as yet. Refusing to let the addiction be a lifelong impairment, she finally gathered strength. It was between uh, 20, 21 there. Um, it, was almost, it was a battle because um, I, I remember being three months clean, I relapsed, six months clean, I relapsed, a year clean, I relapsed. So it was quite a, a fight to get, 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 get out of it. Um, and. Um, yeah, so, so it's not, a, not, not an easy road, not an easy road at all. So one thing I realized was after the relapses, because I believe that I actually, as, as I journeyed this road, I, I, I learned certain things. So I needed to know relapsing three, uh, three months in it, I didn't take note why I relapsed. Six months, I didn't take note. But when I relapsed after one year, I needed to sit down with myself and see what actually, what is happening because I had no one but my mother believing that I can make it, you know. No one believed in me because my life became ra drugs, raw breaking still. And now she was ready to pay attention to what she truly loved. When I gave up drugs, there was an empty space because I, 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 I say that me and my drug became a love affair. So there was an empty space. So I needed something to fill that space. And um, what, 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 what was happening was that the guys, while I was rehabilitating back home in, in Port Elizabeth, the guys actually came to me that introduced me to the game. And they said, you know what, we, we need some girls that, 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 that can play and all of that. And, and I said, well, let me take a try. I, I, I remember also um, my brother-in-law used to say, um, uh, are, you, are, you, are you fine to, to, to go into a pub? Are you, are you actually fine? To, are you actually safe? Because that's where drugs and alcohol is actually, uh, you know, uh, operating. Are you, are you fine? So I said, you know what, um, I'll never know until I, I actually uh, start the process. You know? I'm just going to put the ball there, come off the cushion and land here so I can put that ball there to get to the black. Not your average pool player, her skills have seen her winning multiple national and international championships. One of the, the big uh, awards that I had, it was a small award, a small trophy. Out of 70 ladies in the Eastern Cape, I finished number one and I only started playing for two weeks. And, and, and that for me was amazing. I cried when they, they called me uh, at the presentation. To, to, to come and collect my award. I was crying, soaking in. I heard the people were saying, why is she crying? It's just like a small uh, trophy, you know, but they, they didn't know, they didn't, they didn't know the story behind it. Pool, I'm the, the current lady South African champion in, in, in pool. I've won it eight times. Um, I've also won a lot of um, provincial uh, uh, accolades. I've played for, well, I just played this year. I played for Mopumalanga. Uh, Played, I think I played twice or thrice. I played for them. Played for Gauteng. I played for Northwest. Um, I was. I played for the Eastern Cape. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I've. Uh, in, that, that is a small table, nine ball. Uh, it's the game they more play in China. I've been 20 times to China. Um, I'm still battling to uh, to 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 break through there. Um. And all this hasn't come without gender stereotypes in the sport. There will be a day when COVID-19 is a thing of the past. Until then, our president has announced a national lockdown to save lives. Unless you're an essential worker, stay at home. This is to protect you and others. Stay at home, Dulang Hai, Shalanik Haya, play still. Only leave home to seek medical care. 
go to the bank, or to buy essential items like groceries or medicine. You can still keep fit and healthy while at home. But remember to take care of those who need it. If you do need to leave home, keep your distance from other people and wash your hands regularly using soap or hand sanitizer. Let's keep each other safe. If you feel sick, go to your clinic, doctor or hospital. Or phone the NICD hotline on 0800 029 Triple nine. We can beat this. We can beat this. Count me in. Count me in. Count, Count me, me in. in. This epidemic will pass, but it is up to us to determine how long it will last. Welcome back. This is Stories Untold, and thank you for staying with us. Today, we bring you the story of Nicola Rousseau, a renowned championship holder in pool table sport. Her life took a dramatic turn at the age of 11 when she found herself in the life of drugs and crime. We now meet the man who saw the need to mentor her into where she is today. After years of treatment and getting clean, Nicola was desperate to pull her career back together. We talked to Ishan, the man she says helped steer her in the right direction in Q Sport. Uh, I met in 2005 uh, at a national championship. Um, I, I did watch her plane, she was uh, new and it was her first championship. And uh, but she approached me. Uh, I think somebody told her to talk to me if she wants to try and take her career forward. My opinion of her in the first meeting was uh, uh, one of that uh, just a typical um, arrogant person. Um, it was. Uh, it. I kind of ended. I kind of told her what we needed to do, and I knew she was in Port Elizabeth. Told her it's very hard to you know, work with anybody from there. We, we were in Johannesburg. But um, the, the, the next few meetings that we had, uh, that, that's when I really got to know Nicole and realized that, that look is a little bit deceiving. Uh, it, it was for me. And uh, probably the kindest person, nicest person, <laughs> and a ton of passion and, and drive to get her goals done. So that part came out, came out a little bit later. It, it is, it is the Learning about her past, Ishan reveals what he found surreal. After a few discussions, we, we finally agreed that she'd move up uh, to Johannesburg. And um, I made arrangements uh, as she needed to come up from PE. So I was going to go and just fetch her. And she told me she's got a car. And if she's going to be here, she needs wheels. And, um, and she wanted to bring a car, except it was a very old car so she was scared and not knowing whether it'll it'll drive up to Johannesburg so we made arrangements and uh, I was gonna I went down and we were gonna basically just follow each other I met her at a garage on the entrance of, of uh, Port Elizabeth we left and the car was in a poor condition so we drove very slowly and just before we could get to Colesburg uh, which was a good eight or nine hours later um, the, the car kind of packed up totally Anyway, we towed it and we stayed over, we booked in uh, at Colesburg and uh, she was in communication with her mum and told her what happened. And uh, when we were chatting and we normally joke um, and I saw there was something, something bugging her and when I asked her what happened and she told me, no, her mum just told her that when they left, uh, left the garage and they went back home, uh, when she was entering the house, um, th there was gunfight outside and the window that Nicola would normally uh, look out through, you know, outside or down, down uh, out into the streets, a, bu a stray bullet came through that window. And, uh, and her mom just told her, Nicola, you know, it's, it's God's wishes or whatever, because you could have been there. That bullet could have got you, uh, you know. Her mom was, I think, shaken up. And when Nicola just realized that 
And then that impacted me. And then I realized, okay, this is serious. This is really a lot of danger that she was living in. But looking back to where she started, he can't help but gloat about her achievement. Wow, at this point in time, it's just a one-of-a-kind achievement. Uh, I don't even know if it's going to be replicated uh, ever. Her, her accomplishments, uh, many people have accomplished a lot uh, in sport and in Q-sport, but none has done what Nicola has done to date. Um, considering where she comes from and to have achieved this, she's, yeah, it, it's an amazing story, mind-blowing story, really. I guess it just proves what one can, can do or accomplish if you really, really want to. I often joke with her that, that age is catching up and the new girls are coming in. Uh, she's accomplished almost, almost everything there is to accomplish in the sport and on the world scene, the, the, the best that a player can do in our Q sport is to take part in the world games. And she has an opportunity uh, if she wins the African Championship. There's only one female from the entire continent of Africa that gets to go and play in the World Games. You have to be the African champion. So I'm not sure what's going to go down with all the virus causing all the problems, but next year, 2021, is the World Games. And some stage this year, if everything comes right in this world, uh, that African Championship will take place. So I'd really like her to to probably win that event, to get the spot to go to the World Games and hopefully bring the country a medal and to really top off a, an unbelievable career. Not only is Nicola a protégé in pool table, but she also has a heart of gold. Freedom is recognizing the sacrifice of those who lay down their lives. Those who fought oppression so that we may live ours. Freedom is shattering the stereotype and relentlessly breaking the mold. It is becoming who you want to be and not what you're told. Freedom is knowing your dreams are valid no matter where you come from. The right to education and equal opportunities no matter where you're born. Freedom has no color, no gender, no race. You can be whoever you want and go at your own pace. Freedom is opportunity. Freedom is a work in progress against discrimination and social injustices. Freedom is a chance to change things. Freedom is yours. Freedom is ours. It enables our dreams. It gives us our power. Celebrate freedom this April with SABC. Welcome back to the show. Once in a hectic love affair with drugs, as she puts it, Nicola has been clean for 20 years. Apart from her career, she dedicates her time to those that are still struggling with drug addiction. This is 24-year-old Rajan, a grade 10 dropout with a drug history. He has been clean for six months, and this is how he narrates his story. It all basically started from get. It's not get then to crystal, so eight, you can say almost nine years of it, and I've checked now. Met wrong friends, ended up in prison, but the third strike, the third time was last year, July, when I got sentenced for 30 days. It was like just a test, you know, like a hit on the hand to say, if you don't stop, this is what will happen. Got, got sentenced for possession of drugs 30 days, after, I only said 20 days. After the 20 days when I came out, I decided now I'm officially starting to leave it slowly because I can't leave it the same time. I lost a lot of trust. I lost, let me say, good people in my life. Started, you know, pulling away from me. Never, like, didn't want to be in contact with me anymore and all that kind of things. I done a lot of wrong things. And this is how he got clean. Well, it was by a, there was a feeding scheme by the church in Moffat every Wednesday. So 
it was the first, uh, the first, uh, that first day when we went to the church for the feeding scheme, and then we were sitting. So then, uh, Nikki, Nikki and them asked, "Who's here for the first time?" So it was only me and my girlfriend that we raised up our hands, and then uh, she mentioned something about no, there was supposed to be a camp, uh, some Christian camp that we were supposed to go to, like whoever was interested. So after everything, when we got the food, everything. Me and my girlfriend decided that we were going to go sign up for the camp, you see. So we went to Nikki, we like we were the first two to sign up. So from the, the following Wednesday, that's like now, Nikki saw to say, nah. you know, the thing to say, like these two, they want to change. But now that they've been clean, uh, last week Thursday, I went for a final interview by a company. With a, with, a, with a big boss himself and he told me straight now I just need to sort out my tax number whatsoever but then uh, give him a proof of account which I did give him just ended in Monday morning so hopefully I was supposed to start tomorrow but I'm not sure a shutdown this 21 day shutdown was going to happen Rajan credits Nikki for giving him a second chance at life and with his father well I'm starting to like pull up myself, trying to starting to fix all the mistakes that I've made over the years, starting with my parents basically. And how can I say like trying to win my trust back by certain people, you know, like family members and all of it. Because me and my father's like my father's side of the family, me and my uncles we never, but family functions we we could never sit around one table. They'll always end up a fight. So. Now that I've been back at home and my uncle came that when was last week or the week before, my uncle came looking for my father. So then after that he told me, no, it's time to pull up your socks and not. So I told him, I am. So basically, you know, starting to build myself properly up and plus I'm soon to be a father also. This is his soon to be mother of his child. Angela, now 23 years old, started using at the age of 13. Now also having been clean for six months, she says this is what pushed her to start using drugs. Rebellion, actually. It played a very big role in, you know, when you're 13, you like the lost lamb and everyone gets everything and then when you can't get your own way. Yeah, I decided to, like, Disobey my granddad and I moved out of the house completely. I was lesbian at the time and I moved in with this chick in Madrand. And then it was on the weekend, we were busy brying and drinking and everything. And then she's like, yeah, try. And obviously I already rebelled, so now let me do worse. And then that's how I started. Getting clean was not an easy journey. It was difficult, actually extremely difficult because especially where you live like where we live now there's a lot of people who use and everything and then it's temptation and stuff so the struggle was like extremely we struggled badly so but it was it was a journey it was fun and this time she's not willing to risk her unborn baby's life well the first time I did because I don't know if you mentioned I was previously and then I missed so that due to missing the first time um, played a big role in this one as well and also like yeah just staying clean and everything before we came clean we were like on the streets and the first thing that it's changed is we actually now allowed to stay in the flat um, his family and I are now actually talking and everything my family and I are also talking and everything. We still have a struggle, but we're still talking now. And yeah, it's actually helped a lot. It's brought everything that used to be there that was taken away due to the drug and everything back. So yeah. And she sees herself far in life. Well, right now, because of the pregnancy and everything, it's very hard to get work because of maternity leave and everything. You have to work a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, I basically 
would like to reopen my kitchen again. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the future with him starting work and everything, I get to hopefully open my kitchen again for the fourth time. <laughs> so yeah, but I see myself in the future way far away from here, like doing well for everyone and everything. So yeah. That is what, what my, my, my drug uh, free life program is about. It, it, it starts with me because it, as much as I want to uh, refresh others, it starts with me. It's therapy to me. Every single time I open my mouth, it's therapy with me. It, 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 it builds my foundation greater. And when I watch my videos, when I see my things online, I still, I, I, I have to pinch myself to know that um, uh, I, I really made it because I mean, 20 years clean, I still crave I was on, on rocks. After weed, I moved over to Mandrax, I moved over to rocks, and that was my, my drug of choice. And today, 20 years later, I still crave for my drug addiction. But the big question that I always get is, is that, how do, I, how do I maintain it? How do I jump that craving? If the craving knocks, how do I jump it? You know, and for me, it's just that I've got a new zeal for life. You know, um, I mean, I used to sleep on the street, and today I've got my own flat, you know? And, 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 and it's like, it's amazing. It's, whatever I've achieved, it is insane. It's amazing. I, I, I cannot believe I made it. Whole table in South Africa has always had negative connotations and stigma attached to it. We hope that today's show has actually revealed that it is a sport of international repute. Thank you so much for watching us today. You can search for us on YouTube, searching for Stories Untold SABC. Alternatively, tag us on social media, hashtag Stories Untold SABC. From myself, Kule Mulebazi, and the rest of the team, goodbye.